Welcome to Cowes Baptist Church Remembrance Sunday service. We're going to be using some liturgy from the Northwest Baptist Association and we're also going to include an act of remembrance. We come together today, citizens of earth and heaven, to remember. To remember with appreciation those who have given their lives in the service of others. To remember with dismay the suffering, destruction and pain caused by human conflict. To remember with gratitude those whose lives we've been privileged to share. And to remember with sadness those whose death has caused us loneliness and pain. We come together not to glorify war and conflict, but to recognise its cost and to commit ourselves to be peacemakers and peacekeepers wherever that opportunity falls within our grasp. As we gather, we express our common humanity by recognising the value and worth of every life lost. And thus we express the mystery that to be human means that we are both marred by our common failings and fashioned in the image of our Creator God. And we also give thanks to God for memory itself, because by memory we are warned of the mistakes of the past, but also we're enriched by our experiences. Let us pray. Almighty God, we seek your presence as we come together in this act of remembrance. Help us not to hide from you our sorrow and our pain. May we be open to your leading, that we might strive while on earth to embrace the values of heaven. Enfold us again by your Holy Spirit in your love and healing. And through the sacrifice of your Son, Jesus Christ, Inspire us once more with his promise of eternal life and his example of self-giving. Jesus, you have called us to take up the cross and to follow you. Yet too often we prefer the tools of war or words of conflict. We acknowledge our failure to live as your children. Forgive us that which cannot be undone. Comfort us as we live with its consequences and empower us, we pray, to build a better world in service and obedience to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You know, I can't think of a better hymn to remind us of the presence of God the presence of God with us in all situations of life and even in the face of death than the hymn we're going to sing or listen to in a moment. Last year, I was so fortunate to go to Flanders and stay in Talbot House in Poperinge. This was where the army chaplain, Tubby Talbot, set up a house of soldiers on leave from the trenches as an alternative to the bars and brothels. Here they could have a meal and a cup of tea. They could read, write letters, sing around the piano, put on shows, and of course attend services in the chapel Tubby set up in the attic of the house. Some chose to be baptised and on Easter Sundays, Tubby had to hold back-to-back -back communion services. Such was the demand. As our group gathered to worship in that same attic room, the words we prayed and sang really took on deeper meaning and poignancy as I imagined them being spoken and sung by men surrounded by indiscriminate death and who were all too aware of their own mortality. And now whenever I sing this hymn, I picture men in that attic singing these words with an understanding I can only imagine. Its words are a prayer that God will be close, that God will remain with them, even in the darkest moments, 
even in death. But these are also words of assurance, for we know that such a prayer will be answered. As Romans 10, 13 reminds us, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And Jesus himself promised to always be with us. For those facing their own loss or even death, and for those remembering and grieving the loss of others, these words are so powerful. Let's worship now with this prayer of a song. Abide with me, either singing along or listening to the words. We're going to make our act of remembrance. Friends, let us remember in silence before God 
all those who have died in war. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. Let us pray. Father of mercies, and God of all comfort, we pray this day for all those who continue to suffer because of war, widows, orphans, and all who are bereaved, the wounded, crippled, deaf, dumb, and blinded, the shell-shocked and the traumatized, refugees without home, work, or country. Grant to them all your healing and strength, your help and consolation, and use us in this service, we pray. But God of hosts, yours is the battle against evil and yours is the victory over death. We come to you with memories of war and death, with scars of victory and defeat. 
by your son Jesus, who bears the scars of his victory, one not for himself but for others. Grant us this day healing for the past and resolution for the future. Eternal God, in whose perfect realm no sword is drawn but the sword of justice, and no strength known but the power of love, guide and inspire all who seek your kingdom, that peoples and nations may find their security in the love which casts out fear, that your world may discover and know that peace which is your purpose for us all. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. It seems appropriate on Remembrance Sunday to skip forward through the Beatitudes to verse 9. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Sometimes people think it's dishonouring to talk about peacemaking on Remembrance Day as they link that with pacifism and feel it's insulting to those who've been in the services and have given their lives in an attempt to end conflict and ultimately save lives. I'm not going to talk about that discussion about pacifism or just wars, except to acknowledge that people on both sides of that debate have laid down their lives for others and in the name of achieving peace. And today we have remembered all whose lives have been lost in war and conflict, whatever their part, because they were all victims of war and conflict. But I think it is important to acknowledge that Jesus has something to say about conflict, or rather Jesus has something to say about avoiding conflict. We have learned that the Beatitudes describe the character of the kingdom of God, which is the character of God himself and the character of those who follow him. That is why peacemakers will be called the children of God, because they are like their father in pursuing peace. Jesus himself was the ultimate peacemaker. By his sacrifice, his death and resurrection, he has dealt with sin and guilt and reconciled us with God. Jesus has made it possible for us to be at peace with God. We are no longer enemies of God. Jesus calls us his friends. God calls us his children. We are his beloved children. And being at peace with God, we can learn to be at peace with ourselves as we learn that God no longer counts our sin against us, that God looks at us with love, that he longs for us to know and experience him as our father. Then we can begin to love ourselves and be at peace with ourselves, knowing that when we fall and fail, God forgives us and by his Holy Spirit will help us learn new ways. We can learn to be people of peace, even when we're in troubled circumstances. Jesus' peace passes all understanding, or we might say it doesn't make sense. It's possible to be in dire circumstances and yet know and be full of God's peace. That doesn't mean it is always easy or effortless. There are many circumstances in life where it is natural to feel fear, anxiety, anger or hurt. It's not wrong to feel these things and we need to acknowledge them, not deny them. But as a child of God, we can, we can take all these things to him as our father and ask him to help us deal with the circumstances and the emotions as we're told in Philippians 4, 6 and 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. We may need to go to God's word and read again his truth and promises to help us get that perspective. And we may need the support of godly friends to speak his word to us, pray with us, 
and be physical examples of his love with us. Being at peace with God and at peace with ourselves is the place from which we then can truly learn to be peacemakers. If we're a maelstrom ourselves, we're unlikely to even be concerned with others, let alone be concerned with their welfare. It's important to note that we're talking about peacemakers here. We're not just talking about being peacekeepers, but actively seeking peace, actively helping others achieve peace. Obviously, this must always start with us. There are so many exhortations in scripture to ensure that we are at peace with others, such as Hebrews 12, 14, which tells us to make every effort to live in peace with everyone. And Ephesians 4, 3, make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. And we have also to consider the meaning of peace. The Jewish understanding of peace was shalom, which is more than the absence of conflict. Shalom means well-being, wholeness. So in seeking peace, you are not just trying not to be at odds with others, but you're trying to seek their well-being. 2 Corinthians 3.11 shows this. It says, aim for restoration, comfort one another, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. To be peacemakers, we need to actively seek, pursue and work towards the well-being of others, whether that is our family, friends, our brothers and sisters in Christ, or people in our community, or even people the other side of the world. This is no false peace, no veneer of politeness, no paying lip service to the concerns for others. This is not peace faking, as somebody said. This is peace making. This will take so many forms, more than we have time to go into here. Perhaps peacemaking, seeking the well-being of others, may actually be dealing with unresolved issues in a marriage relationship that have just been left hanging, that are actually causes of tension below the surface. It might be actively trying to understand a person who really winds you up and work out how you can bless them, pray for them, get to know them, do acts of kindness for them. It might be helping a stressed family by doing some practical tasks for them or encouraging a frustrated child to tell you what's bothering them. It might be signing a petition or writing a letter to your MP or financially supporting a campaign for justice. It might be buying fairly traded and ethically produced goods or doing a litter pick or using less plastic. If we think of it, there are countless ways every single day by which we can choose to pursue well-being for ourselves and for others. There are countless ways each day that we can choose to be blessed as we choose to be peacemakers. Let's reflect on that now as we come to a time of prayer. There'll be words on the screen so you can join in and make it your prayer. Almighty Father, you call us your children to live as brothers and sisters in love and harmony and have given your son to be our saviour, the Prince of Peace. Jesus, come and be my peace. Father God, I believe that you know better than me, so I'm going to put myself in your hands. Help me to look at my present circumstances from your perspective. I want to trust you and rely on your strength to find contentment. I want to share the peace that I find in you with others. Help me to yield myself and my life to you and your service, to work hard for reconciliation, understanding and peace in all my relationships for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
I'm afraid I sing does not have any of the songs of peace that we may have wished to sing here. But let's worship now by singing or listening to a wonderful song of praise, which celebrates the unity of the church and the perfect love and certain hope of her Lord, Jesus Christ. Come, people of the risen King. exhortation and encouragement as we leave this gathered space for the place of worship that is our daily life. We're going to use some words by Phyllis Tenney from the Mennonite Church of Canada website. Now go forth with renewed inspiration to do the work of God. Seek good, not evil. Love goodness and establish justice. This is the greatest offering we can make letting justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Go in peace with love for our neighbours. Amen. 
I'm glad you were able to join us for this service of remembrance. May God bless you and I look forward to sharing another time of worship with you soon. Bye.